Coach, uh, coaches evolve, so what's your present philosophy on playing multiple quarterbacks? <laughs> um, strong to quite strong would be the philosophy there. Um, no, we've got a lot of athleticism at the position for sure. You know, we played Lenore Sellers a little bit last year along with Spencer. We did that in the Kentucky game uh, as well. Had a little package for Lenore's. It just so happens that this year we've got you know, multiple quarterbacks, and they all bring an athleticism element that maybe Spencer uh, didn't have that wasn't part of his game. So I think every Saturday you do what gives your team the best chance to be successful, but we're very fortunate that we have some quarterbacks that have athleticism and, and bring a, you know, running element along with the throwing element to their game. Obviously, anytime you see your dad get honored with an award, it's pretty cool. But to be honored by Nick Saban, was uh, was extra special just because the immense amount of respect my dad has for Coach Saban, but what I have for him uh, as well. You know, it was different uh, walking into SEC head coach meetings for the first time in February back in Birmingham and him not being in that room uh, because of what he's meant to college football and how much respect I have for him. And now he's one of you guys here at this event also. So that was a really cool night. And thanks to uh, Coach Saban and, and Terry for, for honoring my dad. And then Robbie Asher. Robbie's, uh, Robbie has really grown and done a great job since he came to our program in January from Auburn. He, uh, you talk about a guy that's a great young man, extremely athletic, you know, hence his baseball career, what he's done as a football player. He started games at the SEC. Uh, he's come in and he's helped make Lenora Sellers better, and Lenora's has helped make Robbie better. And uh, just a, a really – a great addition to our program, great personality, great energy, and has done a really good job helping us get better already uh, on and off the field. A year ago, I talked to you about Don Staley and the way that she affects recruiting, yeah. and that was prior to her going into an undefeated season. What's the best advice that you continue to get her and how she's continued to help you in your recruiting process? Best advice I give her or she's giving me? Both. both, both I don't ways. know if I'm giving her much advice. Um, <laughs> now, she's a great friend. Uh, literally just traded some texts with her a couple days ago about some stuff. Um, she, Dawn's fantastic. It's great for me to be able to just watch her coach, learn from her, go and watch her team's practice. Even last season, early on, I called and talked to her about some things, just not, you know, coaching is coaching, coaching is teaching, and it may be different sports, but there's a lot of similarities. So there's a lot of things that I've learned from her. Um, and she's a great friend. She's willing to do anything to help our program. You know, I mean, we had a junior day back in January where we had about 20 recruits coming on campus, and I think eight of them requested meetings with Don Staley. Um, and it was in the middle of her season, so we had to reach out to her, like, would you have time to meet with eight football players? And I think you have a, she had a game the next day, and she's like, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, she would come to uh, – she was involved in some of our recruiting weekends this year. She's been to my house to help with a recruit in the past. But we're also uh, – she doesn't need my help, but she's asked me – couple times over the years to help her, you know, with a recruit that might be on campus, and I'm willing to do whatever I can. So it's a great resource for me to have a, a coach like that that's a colleague, to have a boss and Ray Tanner that won national championships as a baseball coach. You know, it's a, we're all about South Carolina being great and not, you know, I've been some part of some teams or some schools where it's very territorial. The football coach is all about the football team, and the tennis coach is all about tennis, but not at our place. It's a great environment where we all support each other, and, and uh, Don's right at the top of that. Right, so this is kind of a big picture question. You know, there's some new rules coming in about coaches and analysts and yeah. what they can do. So it's almost going to be like an un unlimited coaching staff. I'm wondering how much you have thought about that in relation to this idea that we are also now going to be paying players mm -hmm. and allocation of resources. So when you think about what your coaching staff could be, and then what that relates to maybe would you give a little on the coaching staff side if it means putting more on the player side? That's a complicated yeah. question, but I'm wondering what your thoughts are on those things. No, it's a great allocation of resources. Yeah, no, it's a great question. I think you're going to see teams get really creative in how they do that. I do believe the NCAA, Ralph, has done a really good job of um, – structuring it where teams can't use that rule to gain too much of an unfair advantage from a recruiting standpoint in a lot of ways. They're going to be coaches. Me personally, and not that this is right, I've always been kind of a less is more kind of guy in a lot of ways. I don't necessarily want an army 
of coaches and staff where I've been a part of that, and it's one of those, well, I thought you were doing that. Well, I thought he was doing it. Well, I thought you were doing it. You know, I want clearly defined expectations and roles for every staff member as well. But certainly, um, yeah, if it means a great player, we'll adjust the coaching staff <laughs> if we need to as well. But I don't think we're very – if you look at our staff size, Ralph, compared to other schools, I'd say we're on the low end as far as like coaches and analysts. I mean, everybody's got 10 coaches, but as far as the analysts. But I've tried to be very uh, strategic and thorough about who those analysts are and not just hire a guy to hire somebody. I mean, we have Mike Shula, longtime coach in that role. Um, we have a Kevin Hubbard, who's a former defensive coordinator at a Division Three school in that role. We've got some really good young coaches in that role, you know, so I think you've got, I'm going to continue to learn more about it, how we can best allocate resources to make our program successful. And, and certainly uh, at the end of the day, it's about the players on the field for sure.